The first thing is you have to treat every call now that it's a worst case scenario. If you're going from EMT to paramedic, you're now in charge of patient care. If something bad happens, that run form, that report, that narrative, it is yours they're gonna look at to go back and review that case. If it's a bad outcome, it's your case. So remember, when we're going to a patient, always start thinking and start doing it right now if you're an EMT still. Think worst case scenario. Don't worry about what some random guy in the scene says. Your patient is called non one. It's a worst case scenario until proven otherwise. Let's start from there. Now the first piece starts as you're getting ready for paramedic school. So what I did, I had a leg up the entire time I was in paramedic school. Why? I did something what I call pre-game studying. So I studied anatomy and physiology, EMS medications, pharmacology, some basic EKG cardiology. I didn't know what cold did because obviously I was just learning about it for the first time. But I had an awareness level and that's what you want to gain before medic school is an awareness level. It makes the whole process easier when we're transitioning later on. So when people were in class seeing EKGs for the first time, you look around and I remember, I literally remember the moment we're going over EKGs. I'm looking around the room, everyone's lost. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, that's AFib. I'm like 90% sure. Get that awareness level. You got a pregame study. So while I was in medic school, I was working in a busy 911 system as an EMT. Now, I was trying as much as possible to pick up as many ALS shifts as I could. I didn't care if there were days, evening, overnight. I wanted to work ALS and I also didn't want to just work with the same medics. I wanted to work with a bunch of different paramedics. That way I was able to see how different paramedics operate while I was in paramedic school. So next two big points, communication skills and the art of delegation. So now it's kind of move forward in a career. Think at this time we're doing ride time. We're doing clinicals in the ambulance work nearing being a new medic. We're not a new medic yet. What helped me through this period was learning to delegate. So here's what we do with delegation. You have, let's say you have your EMT partner with you and you're the paramedic, right? Any skill that the EMT can perform, you want them to perform them. You don't want to just do everything yourself. If you have the privilege to have the fire department with you as well, you can delegate even more because you have more hands, right? So you want to delegate everything at the EMT level that it's possible, first responder level as possible. The only skills that we're going to perform as a medic, we're going to save these skills. It's the skills that only we can do. What you don't want to do is be a medic that's doing everything. We're putting on the oxygen, we're doing the blood glucose, we're doing the EKG. Uh, we're doing the IV, we're drawing up two different medicines. Half that stuff could have been outsourced to your partners. And that is not only great for like the care of the patient, but it's better for your team as well as they're being involved. There it is. I remember the moment I was a new medic and I was going to my first really bad call. It was a rapid SVT call. And this is why I stress so much about mnemonics. Mnemonics cover your butt in emergency medicine. So what you want to do, and I talk about a lot of mnemonics here on this channel in my course, is you want to have a system where you go to a certain call, it's a crazy call, you got a mnemonic to make sure that you just cover all the bases, right? And the final part that I did when I was a new medic was I always wanted to challenge myself. I did not want to get comfortable. My whole first year as a medic, I just worked, worked, worked. It wasn't a money thing. It was a focus on getting better as a medic. That first year as a medic, you're going to go from here to here. Like you're going to see a huge difference in the quality of your care because you're learning so much. Like every day you're learning something new as a new medic. Once you're cleared, you're on your own, right? Pick up different shifts. I would try and get like, like, you know, if someone like, <laughs> like if I was like, they need an opening for like the fly car. I'm like, I'm doing it. Like I'm doing it overnights, uh, you know, days, whatever it was, new partners. Um, I would try to work with partners that had like 
not a lot of experience, more of a challenge, right? So always trying to level up. If you are someone getting ready for school or national registry exams, the first link in the description is the exact resource I give to all my students to pass school and NREMT. And just for watching this video, I'll give you a lifetime access to it right now. It's the first link in the description. I look forward to all of your success and I'll catch you on the next video. Let's go.